We already saw that English, like many other languages, has ways to indicate particular information structure within a sentence. We use that fronting operation, particularly in order to indicate contrast with something that's been said before. But there are other constructions that can be used to gain particular effects. And one that's used is the it cleft, which is particularly used to convey focus. That is, it's used to convey that a particular constituent conveys new information, while another part of the sentence is old information, information that's presupposed, which is assumed to be agreed. An example of the it cleft would be something like, um, it was my dog that at, at the homework, where it's agreed that some, something at the homework and the new information I'm giving you is that it was my dog. The information structure of these is a very interesting topic in itself, but for us, the crucial point here is that that part that's in focus has to be a constituent. So we can use this then as a diagnostic for constituency. In order to do that in practice, you have to think of a kind of recipe for clefts. So one way of thinking about the recipe is you start from a sentence. So let's take the sentence, um, my sister loves ripe Italian tomatoes. And we want to know whether ripe Italian tomatoes is a constituent or not. The way we'd construct a cleft with that as the focus is First, we'd move it to the beginning of the sentence. So if the sentence was, my sister loves ripe Italian tomatoes, we'd move ripe Italian tomatoes and we'd get ripe Italian tomatoes, my sister loves. Then we have to separate that part that we've moved from the remnant of the sentence, the sentence that it's moved from. We separate it either with that or with a relative pronoun, who or which, depending on what's appropriate. So then you'll wind up with ripe Italian tomatoes that my sister loves. And then the other part of the cleft is the it and the form of the verb be. So when you preface those to what we've just done, you'll wind up with it is ripe Italian tomatoes that my sister loves. That's a perfectly grammatical sentence. So it's evidence that ripe Italian tomatoes is a constituent in the original sentence, where the original sentence, you remember, was my sister loves ripe Italian tomatoes. So it's quite a long process, but the reason it's important to think of that whole recipe is that the same sequence of words can appear as a constituent in one context, but may not be a constituent in another context. So when you're testing a sequence of words in a sentence, you need to test it relative to that sentence. So that's why in this case, we start from the sentence. We, the question was, in the sentence, my, my sister loves ripe Italian tomatoes. Is ripe Italian tomatoes a constituent? And so we construct the cleft based on that sentence. And that's crucial for using it as a diagnostic for constituency. We can use clefts to diagnose constituency not only of noun phrases, but also prepositional phrases. So for example, if we took the sentence, um, my sister found some loose change behind the sofa cushions. And I want to know, is behind the sofa cushions a constituent? The way I could test it for that sentence would be to construct the cleft. It was behind the sofa cushions that I found that my sister found some loose change. So that's a grammatical sentence, and that tells us that in the original sentence, my sister found some loose change behind the sofa cushions. Behind the sofa cushions is a constituent. In fact, it's a PP. There are other constituents in that sentence. There are other clefts that you could make. So you could say, it was my sister who found some loose change behind the sofa cushions or it was some loose change that my sister found behind the sofa cushions. So each of those different clefts pulls out a different constituent from the original sentence. So now we have quite a lot of information about the constituency of that original sentence. However, there are some limitations to this as a diagnostic for constituency. In particular, depending on the dialect of English that you speak, may be limited as to whether you can uh, focus 
adjective phrases or verb phrases in this construction. So many dialects of English don't allow you to focus either of those types of constituent. So um, my sister is very tall. It's very tall that my sister is. For some speakers of English, that's grammatical. For many, it's ungrammatical. So um, depending on the dialect, this constituency test is not um, available for adjective phrases or, and the same applies for verb phrases. That doesn't actually mean that in those dialects, those sequences, so adjective phrases, don't exist, that those aren't constituents. It's the fact that it cleft are limited in what kinds of constituents can be focused. Uh.